This video in no way condones fraud, but instead explains how it happens and the consequences thereof. Scammers, beware. By the end of this, you'll reevaluate what you think you plan on doing. All right, so pay attention, y'all. Let's get into it. SIM swapping is when a fraudster manages to switch the phone service from a victim's cell phone to the fraudster's cell phone. In doing this, the fraudster has the victim's phone number on their phone. They usually do this so they can change passwords on bank, email, or other business accounts. It may not seem like a big deal when you first hear it, but fraudsters basically have the keys to the kingdom if they can make this work. So how exactly do they do this? Step one, they pick their victim and gather information on them. Step two, they call the phone provider to switch services from the victim's phone to the fraudster's phone. Step three, they change as many bank account passwords as they can so that only they have access. And finally, step four, they withdraw money as fast as possible before any of the financial institutions shut down those accounts. I know that was fast, it might help to rewind, but I'll explain it this way. At the end of the day, the fraudster is trying to take money out of other people's accounts, right? Now, if that's not the end goal, then they're not a fraudster in the first place. So the easiest way to take money out of someone's account is to log in and make a withdrawal. But fraudsters have no way to do this without the right password. So what do they do to get the password or the pin? They actually reset it and change it to something that they know and the victim doesn't. This gives them account access. But nowadays, banks and apps won't let you change the password unless you verify your identity through a text message, email, or phone call. You know how they like to send a four to eight digit code before you reset passwords? Well, this prevents the fraudster from changing things because the code is getting sent to the true owner instead of them. But if the fraudster actually owns your phone number, then that code will get sent straight to them and they'll be able to finish logging in. So in order to finish the login process, you would need the victim's phone. The best way to do that is to get the phone provider to switch phones for you. And that is just a matter of a single call. The fraudster will dial up AT&T, Verizon, whoever, pretending to be the victim and tell them that they want to move their service to a different device. The provider will likely ask to verify name, address, email, phone number, and possibly the account number or account PIN. It's up to the fraudster to pick someone who has this information available so that it's easy to gather and repeat back to Sprint, Cricket, AT&T, whoever the provider is. Now who makes a good victim? No one. No one makes a good victim because this crime should never actually be done, right? But most fraudsters will defraud someone they know, likely a family member, friend, old classmate, a co-worker they know a lot about. They sometimes enlist the help of background check services to provide some of the victim's contact details. Other times, fraudsters will simply reach out to the victim themselves, pretending to be the phone company. There's a ton of options on how to gather this information. One can even go on the dark web on file sharing websites like Keybase to access a list of victims and their personal information. But however a fraudster chooses a victim and gathers the information, once the phone service gets switched over, the fraudster has to move quick. It may take the victim a little bit of time to notice that their phone won't make calls or to realize that they're not receiving text messages, but once they do, the clock is on. It's a race between the fraudster and the victim for who can do what the fastest. The quicker the victim switches their phone service back, the less time the fraudster has to change passwords and withdraw cash. The faster the fraudster moves, however, the more they can drain from the victim's account and the more of a headache the victim has to deal with later. Now fraudsters who do SIM swapping aren't just battling the phone company and the victim. They also have to worry about the financial institutions that they're dealing with. Banks and apps have designed their systems so that if anything looks off, they'll shut down the account. A fraudster running activity on the customer's account might set off several alarms. For instance, a totally different device or IP address from what's usually used could trigger an investigation into who's using the account. So it's in the fraudster's best interest to move fast or to just not do the scheme at all. Now, anybody looking to run game like this is looking for a bad time. Yes, the rewards in theory could be great, but odds are you won't make that much off this scheme, you'll get caught, and you'll spend years in jail or prison for doing something you ain't had no business doing in the first place. 
But of course, most fraudsters don't care about that. Ask Stephen Defayor, a worker for one of America's biggest phone carriers. He sends swaps for $500 daily bribes from scammers for almost two weeks between October and November of 2018. This ultimately affected 19 victims from across the country. Now, Stephen only ended up earning less than $2,500 doing this, but once he got caught by the feds, he was actually ordered to pay over $77,000 in restitution. I'm not sure what sense that makes, but if the overall scam earned that much money, then he got what was coming to him. Along with the high restitution, Stephen was made to spend three months in jail, one year on house arrest, and forced to do 100 hours of community service. The government took a bunch of time from his life because in the end, he had a total disregard for the people he was screwing over. So then why am I telling you this? Well, every time we share secrets from the highly sought after 2022 fraud Bible, we take some of the value out of it. Why purchase the Bible when the game is already public knowledge? By taking the value out of the fraud Bible, we stop putting money in the hands of those who make their living in the black market. So if you want more fraud news and analysis, then go ahead and press that like button and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, stay out of trouble.